Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G and it's Monday, October 11th. While Tesla is moving its headquarters to Texas, CEO Elon Musk made it clear that the automaker would still grow in California. And the news just broke that Tesla is now taking over a large part of Hewlett Packard's campus in Palo Alto, California. The lease is believed to be for a 10-year period, and Tesla is taking over roughly half of the campus. The Registry San Francisco, a publication of the Bay Area Real Estate, reports, quote, The company just completed an office expansion in its hometown for additional 325,000 square feet, according to sources with knowledge of the leasing market in Palo Alto. The electric vehicle and energy company will be leasing the space at 1501 Page Mill Road from Hewlett Packard in a building that once served as the global headquarters for the technology giant. Tesla has officially started its so-called wide release of the full self-driving beta software in the U.S., which consists of slowly adding more owners to the download based on their safety score. After years of waiting, paying customers had to drive their cars and prove to the sensors and system that they were good enough drivers to access the real thing. And now, the real thing is hitting the road, but we're not exactly sure how much. It was supposed to occur on Friday, but in yet another last-minute push, it landed today. Elon Musk announced on Twitter that some cars with a perfect 100 score will have access to the download and the new release. But he didn't specify how many. In the past, he said that Tesla would add about 1,000 new users per day, so we can assume that 1,000 got it today. In a special guest article, David Reich, a German Super Tesla fan, gave us a tour of Tesla's opening festival at Gigafactory Berlin. You can find a video and a wealth of pictures on our site, but here is a written highlight. Quote, My personal highlight was the factory tour. Tesla created a two-kilometer long path next to the production line. Every 50 meters, there were several Tesla employees responsible for their part of the line. They were happy to share insights about their job, the challenges, and technical details. He goes on to say, quote, Tesla estimated the tour would last for around one and a half hours. I stayed five hours inside. Tesla unveiled its latest structural battery pack with 4680 cells. It was during the Gigafactory Berlin tour. Inspired by the aerospace innovation of building airplane wings as fuel tanks, Tesla decided to build a battery pack that acts as a body structure, linking the front and the rear underbody parts. Combined with the single large casting parts, Tesla's new design reduces the number of parts, the total mass of the battery, and therefore enabling them to improve efficiency and ultimately range of the electric vehicles. And now, at Gigafest, Tesla unveiled the latest version of the structural battery pack. The images show a simple design of the batteries encased inside the bottom, making for an ultra-slim, low, and simple machine. During the presentation, Tesla said that it would be able to mount the seats directly and lower the body on around it, which would actually go to simplify the process even more. Tesla announced a new Giga beer, as in alcoholic beverage beer. With the Cybertruck-inspired bottle, they plan to sell it out of the factory in Berlin. Musk was discussing some of Tesla's plans to make life easier and more fun for the employees. He discussed the fact that Tesla is building a train at the factory to help with commuting, and they're going to cover the walls and the plant with street art. He also said, quote, we're going to have a beer. And then he displayed a custom bottle on the screen. Looks a lot like a transparent crystal. Along with Tesla's short shorts, Tesla's broken glass shirts, and Tesla tequila, the new Giga beer should be right at home among its peers. Electrek got the opportunity to experience the upcoming GT version of the Ford Mustang Mach-E electric crossover. According to Ford, the GT was not built only for power, but also to be the complete package, offering handling, grip, and a range focus. But then again, it still has that kind of power. After a drive, Electrek can confirm a 0 to 60 mile per hour acceleration in 3.5 seconds. The GT version includes 20-inch alloy wheels, Magna ride suspension, three distinct drive modes, and sits 10 millimeters lower than the others. The company began producing the GT models in July and has already begun taking orders. The 2021 models are all spoken for, but you can still pre-order for 2022. Foxconn, which is better known as the iPhone manufacturer in China, has been working on electric cars. And now, their first vehicle has been spotted ahead of the unveiling. Starting around last year, Foxconn has been very busy. They developed a platform of open source hardware and software for EV manufacturing, purchased most of Lordstown's factory in Ohio, and is currently building a big factory in Wisconsin. 
and now the first branded electric vehicle was spotted under the name Foxtron. The vehicle appears to be a crossover or maybe a wagon. The images also show that it has a large screen behind the steering wheel. It's expected to be unveiled at an event October 18th, along with two other models. The truck rental company Penske is taking delivery of five Navistar International EMV series medium duty full battery electric trucks. Penske plans to operate the new electric trucks at various U.S. locations while they evaluate the operations of the trucks in real world situations. Penske's total fleet consists of more than 50,000 vehicles, so these five EVs don't amount to too much. But hey, it's a start, right? Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.